Hi everyone, and today we'll be starting module 3 in Unit 1 Biology, which is all about reproduction. And we'll be starting with sexual reproduction in humans. So just a general breakdown. So humans are, you know, either male or female. And the process of um, reproduction begins in the female as oogenesis, whereas the males make sperm via spermatogenesis. So this is called gametogenesis. Okay, these are the gametes. Right. The next step is fertilization of the of the eggs by the sperm. Right. And in order for this to happen, we in the female there's the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. And finally, to prevent pregnancy, there's contraception. Okay. So after fertilization, it leads to pregnancy, and uh, where it will be introduced to the fetus, the placenta, as well as the mother, and Later on, we'll be talking about contraceptive methods. So let's begin by taking a look at the diagram of the male and female reproductive system. So here's a picture of the male reproductive system. We have the testis, and it, it is contained in the scrotum, right? So sperm is made here, all right? So sperm is made in the epididymis, and after that, the sperm travels via the vast difference you can see this, this blue arrow here it goes all the way up it does not enter the urinary bladder this is this is behind the bladder right however the prostate gland which is this organ here adds fluid to the sperm the bulbourethral gland which are these glands here also add fluid to the sperm and then when all these fluids are added to the sperm it is called semen all right the seminal vesicles which you can't see in this diagram but they just put it here all right um also adds fluid to the sperm so semen will now travel by the urethra and then out of the penis in ejaculation okay now this is a diagram of the female reproductive system so eggs are made in the ovary they travel via the, um, the oviduct or the fallopian tube then they go over here and are implanted in the um, the wall of the uterus called the endometrium all right this is first of the, this is um if fertilization occurs and fertilization usually occurs in the fallopian tube all right if fertilization does not occur then menstruation will eventually occur which is shedding of the endometrium which we'll talk about in another class Okay, so again, the male reproductive system is made up of these glands here, and, well, not glands, but organs. So you can take a look at what they are and what they do. You can take a screenshot and you can read it. I'll give you time to take your screenshots now. So these are all the, um, the elements of the male reproductive system. And it's very important that you know the function as well as the structure of these glands and structures. So let's take a look at spermatogenesis. So spermatogenesis occurs in the seminiferous tubules and mitosis as well as meiosis are involved here. So if you forgot what mitosis and meiosis are, you can go back to the previous video in unit two and take a look at that. All right, so testosterone controls spermatogenesis. From the onset of puberty in the male, the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, releases a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. This hormone then travels to the, um, the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland now then releases two of its own hormones, luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, called FSH. So LH would enter the bloodstream, travel to the interstitial cells, where it fits into receptors there. Now there are cells called Leydig cells, and the LH causes the Leydig cells to manufacture testosterone and it is released into the bloodstream. The effects of testosterone causes the development of secondary sexual characteristics, the stimulation of sertoli cells so that spermatogenesis will be facilitated, and also stimulation of the germinal epithelial cells so that spermatogenesis can occur. Now, as I, as I said before, FSH is also required for spermatogenesis. It will travel from the anterior pituitary gland to the sertoli cells and it will cause them to increase the activity so that they would 
quicker develop sperm and also secrete fluid into the seminiferous tubules. So this is a diagrammatic representation here of how the hormones work. So you can see the hypothalamus in the brain here releases gonadotropin releasing hormone, causing the anterior pituitary gland to release FSH and LH. LH acts on the Leydig cell, so L for LH, L for Leydig, very easy. And the Leydig cells actually produce the testosterone, and that leads to spermatogenesis. The FSH, S for NFSH and S for Sertoli cells, they produce some hormones and also are involved in spermatogenesis, and this is an entire negative feedback system. So when there's a lot of testosterone, it will negatively feed back on the pituitary and the hypothalamus and say, hey, we have enough testosterone, there's no need to keep releasing your hormones. And the opposite will be true if it is low. All right. This is a diagrammatic representation now of how mitosis and meiosis works in spermatogenesis. So initially, all right, we have the spermatogonial cell and this keeps dividing via mitosis, producing, producing the spermatogonium first. Then the spermatogonium will, will um, divide and make more of themselves and the plural is called spermatogonia. Another mitotic division will cause the development of the primary spermatocyte. It is here, so this, these names are very important to remember, primary spermatocyte. Here meiosis occurs now. So the, the important thing is the chromosome number. So initially we had 46 chromosomes, the 2N number, right? Or the diploid number of um, chromosomes. And after meiosis 1, we know that the diploid becomes haploid. So there's half the number of chromosomes now, right? So 2N divides into N and N as the daughter cells. Meiosis 2 will occur and two more daughter cells will be produced. And these are called spermatids. So they are almost mature. And after the Sertoli cells um, secrete their substances and hormones, it causes the spermatocytes to develop into sperm cells. Right? And sperm cells are also haploid, 23. Because remember, they need to go and combine with the, with the ugonium now, or the ovum, to make a 46 um, chromosome number cell in fertilization. Okay? So you can see that it begins at the outer edge of the seminiferous tubule where the spermatogonium are. And as they mature and mature and mature, the mature sperm are in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Alright, so we go from the outer edge into the lumen or the center of it. Okay? Let's focus on the female reproductive system now. So it consists of the ovary, the oocy, the fallopian tube, the uterus, cervix, and vagina. So less structures here to remember in the female reproductive system. You can take your screenshot there. So let's take a look at the female version now, which is eugenesis. So ugonia stuff, right? They are the germinal epithelial cells. Okay, and they also divide by mitosis. So it's almost a, almost, um, a copy of um, spermatogenesis. They are eventually deployed and they are in the ovaries. Now the primary oocyte now is also deployed just like the sperm, right? So uh, now right at this um, this point is where meiosis 1 begins, all right? And the primary oocyte will remain at prophase 1 in meiosis 1 for many years, all right? So the primary follicle is larger than a primordial follicle, right? So a primordial follicle is simply a primary oocyte and it's surrounded by a layer of other cells okay the primary follicle is simply the primary oocyte with more cells surrounding it all right and, the, and those cells are called granulosa cells and they produce sex hormones all right the secondary follicle now is very is where things get very important so it contains a secondary oocyte and that is haploid okay now in in contrast to spermatogenesis, when meiosis occurs, there's not um, a straight division of the follicle. So there's one proper follicle, right, or a secondary oocyte, and then there's a polar body, which is which is of no use and it eventually um, degenerates, right? You'll see a diagrammatic representation where I explain it better. Okay, and then finally meiosis two will occur after fertilization. 
So the graphion follicle now is the mature follicle and that contains the secondary oocyte. Remember the secondary oocyte has completed meiosis 1 and is now haploid. Okay? The secondary oocyte will remain at metaphase 2 of meiosis until fertilization will occur. Okay? So this is a diagrammatic representation of oogenesis. So we have ogonium here. All right, ogonium is the first first step here and it is deployed it divides by mitosis to form the primary oocyte this is present at birth before puberty it is arrested in prophase one of meiosis one now at puberty it will start to complete meiosis one and there and it will be stuck at meiosis two now at meiosis two we have the secondary oocyte and then we have a polar body. So the secondary oocyte is the important cell here. The polar body will simply degenerate. All right. And this is where it changes from hap from diploid to haploid now. So 23 chromosomes there. Only at ovulation and fertilization will it complete meiosis 2 and form a fertilized egg, which will add the 23 chromosomes from the sperm, the 23 from the egg, and make a 46 chromosome egg. Okay, and there's another polar body here, by the way, after meiosis two. So, in contrast to the sperm, which will you will get four sperm per um, spermatogonium, there's only one ovum per ugonium. All right, the the polar bodies degenerate. All right, and also on the right hand side, you can see the size of the oocyte. So you can see the cells surrounding the oocyte here. These little cells. That's what that's the granulosa cells. All right. Um, just a note on the corpus luteum, if the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum will simply degenerate and we will go into this in another video where we learn about the ovarian cycle and the menstrual cycle as well. Alright, so this table is a nice um, reminder of the steps of um, oogenesis and the number of chromosomes at each step. Right, this is essentially... Um, how the hormones work, all right? So genesis begins at the sixth week of fetal development, right? So even before you are born, genesis is there, all right? Um, so the ugonia will, will enter meiosis one and they are known as primary oocytes. When meiosis one is completed, the secondary oocyte and the first polar body are formed and this is where it is haploid as well. The secondary oocyte is in, in metaphase two of meiosis and it has to wait until fertilization can occur to complete the meiotic division all right during the process of oogenesis at puberty gnrh just like any male will be released by the hypothalamus and travel to the anterior pituitary gland and you will get an increase in fsh fsh is going to travel to the ovaries and they will target the primordial follicles there and cause them to develop into primary follicles and each month, only one of these will mature and others will start to degenerate. So by the time a woman is at puberty, there's a predetermined amount of eggs that she has the potential to make. All right. And as the primary follicles enlarge, they produce estrogen. Estrogen also works to enlarge the primary follicle and encourages the completion of the meiotic division. So it's only at puberty you will get FSH and estrogen. And that will, is what will trigger the um, completion of meiosis 1. Okay. Now, this is going a little bit into the ovarian cycle. But fear not, I will release a video very soon explaining the ovarian cycle in detail. Alright. Now, this is a very nice table of the sperm versus the egg in terms of structure. Okay. This is a common exam question and you can take a look at it. It is very simple comparing the structures of the sperm and the egg. All right, um, just one little note on the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, big words, but it's simply a diagrammatic representation of uh, what I've been telling you all along, that the hypothalamus produced the GnRH, the pituitary is releasing its LH and its FSH and it's targeting the ovary. The ovary produces two hormones called estrogen and progesterone. So it will negatively feed back on the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus if there is enough estrogen and progesterone just like in spermatogenesis okay and this is essentially what um 
is a nice typed out note of what I've been telling you of eugenesis and the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. So you can take a screenshot of that and you can have a read of it. All right, so this was a short video on sexual rep um, reproduction in humans. We will then go into the ovarian cycle, the uterine cycle, and also contraception and pregnancy in another class.